Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I got one of those emails today that really makes me shake my head. Uh, and it's because the car companies, even if they manage to build a good car, have trouble selling them properly uh, or selling the things that go along with the cars properly. And this is the kind of thing that really amazes me. I mean, there are people who spend their careers doing marketing. There are people who spend their careers doing sales. There's people who spend their careers doing engineering. And you'd think that they would have figured this stuff out by now. But I've mentioned before that I own a Ford Explorer. In fact, I own two Ford Explorers. And in my life, I've owned five or six total, cumulatively, over the years. I like Ford Explorers. My brother used to work at Ford. I got my Ford Explorer A plan. But my brother also, at one point in time, helped design the suspensions on the Ford Explorers. And so I always knew that if I had a problem with my Ford Explorer, I could call up Ken and go, hey, Ken, I got a problem with my truck. Haven't had to make the phone call in that sense yet. However, however, I have no problem with the engineering of my Ford Explorer. I have a problem with the way they market, especially in the after sales period, because I bought my Ford Explorer about six months ago now, give or take. And it's got 12,000 miles in the odometer. I rolled it over yesterday to 12,000 miles. So my Ford Explorer is still a youngster, okay? Less than a year old as far as I'm concerned. And it's only had the one oil change, okay? So here's the deal. I get an email this morning from Ford, okay? And it's actually from Ford Protect Headquarters, okay? So I'm, I'm when I saw that, return line. I thought, oh, it's they're, they're going to try to sell me a service contract or an extended warranty of some sort on my Ford. Now, I've got no problem with that concept in general. Okay, The idea that you can buy an extended service contract on a vehicle if you're going to keep it for a long period of time makes complete sense to me. In fact, I recommend it if you're going to buy one, buy one from the manufacturer. So the idea that Ford, in the back of their minds, might be saying, hey, Steve Lato bought a Ford Explorer Perhaps someday he'd like to get the extended service contract or extended warranty for that truck. I have no problem with that at all. I do, however, have a problem with the email they sent me this morning. The email says, Steve, an important message from Ford about your Explorer. So it's an important message. Now, <laughs> again, no problem with that. Even though I recognized it was a sales email. This is not a TSB. This is not a recall. This is not a goodwill service campaign. This is them trying to sell me something. And I understood that. But it says, Steve, an important message from Ford about your Explorer. Below it is a photograph of two happy people, a couple, a man and a woman. Although I cannot make that assumption about their relationship, that they are in a relationship at all, that they're a couple. Nowadays, who knows, okay? And they appear to be loading what, what look like snowshoes into the back of a Ford vehicle. So they've just been snowshoeing. They're happy, they're smiling, and they're out in the great Michigan outdoors where they were just snowshoeing like everyone does when it's cold and snowy out. And there's a caption written across the photograph. It says, this winter, keep that new vehicle confidence alive whenever you venture, wherever you venture. This winter, which is now, Keep that new vehicle confidence alive wherever you venture. Keep that new vehicle confidence. Now, see, I do, have an, I do have a confidence in my vehicle. It's new. It's got a warranty on it. So I know that even though it's running flawlessly right now, if I'm driving down the road and something bad happens, it's covered by warranty. I'm not that unconfident in my vehicle right now. But I get this email that suggests I could be. Now, why would I be? The vehicle's, like I said, about six months old. It's got 12,000 miles on it. Why would I lack confidence? And then below that, just in case I didn't understand the message of the happy couple putting their snowshoes back in the car, don't let unexpected covered vehicle repairs disrupt what really matters in your life. Continue to do what you love this winter with a Ford Protect Extended Service Plan. So don't let unexpected repairs disrupt. Now, it's true. If I was driving down the road with somebody else who looks like a model and we've got snowshoes in the back of my Explorer, if it broke down, that would be unexpected. And I would, I would, I would be unhappy about that. Okay. But the point is I don't need an extended service contract yet because I've still got the warranty. 
but they're trying to sell me an extended service contract by scaring me into thinking I need one. And this is what bothers me because I'm getting mixed messages from Ford. When Ford sold me my truck, and I did a video on that, I, I shopped around to find a dealership that would treat me properly after being treated horribly by the first couple I went to. I found a dealership, and I found a, I found a vehicle I liked, and I bought it. That vehicle came, and I'm not trying to advertise Ford here. I'm simply pointing out this disconnect between what they tell you when you buy it through a dealership and then what they tell you later you need. So my Ford Explorer came with a bumper-to-bumper three-year, 36,000-mile warranty. As you can guess, at six months, I'm still within the three years. And at 12,000 miles, I'm still within the 36,000 miles. It came with a powertrain warranty of five years, 60,000 miles. Again, I'm well within both of those. I'm also within the safety restraint limitations. And I'm also within the corrosion perforation only limitations. And since my truck does not have a diesel engine, I'm not concerned about the diesel engine, which is the fifth of those categories. But I'm well within all of those, as you might expect, at six months of ownership. So what does the rest of the email say? It says, Stephen. Stephen, <laughs> I'll forgive them because when I bought the truck, it was in fact titled in the name of Stephen, whoever he may be. Whether you're enjoying a weekend ski trip, a winter festival, or visiting a museum, you'll want your Explorer protected from the unexpected. A Ford Protect extended service plan protects you from future covered vehicle repair costs that could interfere with your adventures and budget this Winter. That's my concern. If I got this email two years from now, or even a year from now, I'd understand it. But when I bought the vehicle and I'm going into the first winter with 12,000 miles, well within three years, for them to say, you could have a problem this winter for which you need an extended service contract. There is a disconnect there. So here's what it says. With Ford Protect, you're covered. With smart technology built into your Explorer, a single vehicle repair alone could cost more than the price of Ford Protect coverage. And you'll only pay $0 at the time of service and potentially save hundreds and even thousands of dollars. And then they have the scary picture. It's a picture of an Explorer. Looks kind of like mine. And it says an engine repair could cost you $6,077. Transmission repair could cost you $5,000. $97. Steering gear could cost you $1,567. Lane keeping system, if your lane keeping system fails, that could cost you $1,041. Except I don't have a lane keeping system. <laughs> I don't think I do. How about the AC evaporator core? If that were to go bad this winter, $1,204. And what if the headlight and a taillight assembly both went bad simultaneously. Does that happen? Headlamp and tail lamp assembly. $2,339. Now, if any of those six things happened this winter, I'd be very, very disappointed, but I wouldn't have to pay $6,000 for an engine because it's still covered by the powertrain. I wouldn't have to pay for the steering gear because that's covered by the bumper to bumper. I wouldn't have to pay for any of this stuff because it's still covered. It's still covered. And so what's weird about this, and, and I've gotten that sales pitch before at the time of sale. Now, here's the deal. My salesman did not pitch me on any of this stuff at the closing when we bought the car, when I bought the car from him. And I jokingly said to him, aren't you going to try to sell me a service contract? And he goes, why, do you want one? <laughs> I said, no. And he said, no, I'm not going to try to sell you one then. I don't care. And that's one of the reasons it's so refreshing to me. But I've done the purchases where I've been buying a brand new car and the guy tells me about all of the things he'll do with the warranty. And then that guy or another person, it's often a finance person, comes in and says, okay, you get a 336, right? And you get a 560 in the powertrain. But you understand, you're, you're, you're probably going to keep this vehicle longer than 36,000 miles, right? Do you understand that if your headlamp and tail lamp assembly goes bad, that could cost you a couple thousand dollars? And we'll sell you a service contract right now that'll take care of that. And I've actually said, you know something? I can buy this later, can't I? 
And, and they don't want to hear that because they're fearful you're going to buy it from somebody else. Or you're going to buy it directly from the manufacturer. You're going to buy it off the internet, whatever. And I've had, I've had a salesperson go, yeah, but right now we can roll it into financing, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And I'm always, mm, I'll take a look at it later. You know, I'll take a look at it later. But I've actually had the finance person or the salesperson or somebody say, the cost of this service contract, you buy it right now, 2,500 bucks, three grand, four grand, whatever it might be. And I go, you know, I don't want to do that right now. And they go, you understand a brand new engine is going to cost you $6,077? And I look at them and go, am I going to need a new engine? And they go, well, and I've actually had a salesperson go, these things have got problems with the engines. <laughs> right after they just sold me the vehicle. <laughs> or while they're selling me the vehicle. And I, and I, and I want to look at them and go, well, maybe I shouldn't buy the car then, should I? Do you have a vehicle that doesn't have that engine in it? See, you can't tell me it's a wonderful vehicle with a great warranty. And in the same breath say, and by the way, it might have catastrophic problems that are going to cost a fortune you might want to insure yourself against with a service contract. You can't do that. But if you're going to do that, you should at least ask yourself how it looks the way you're pitching it. Now, I understand that if you were to ask the people behind this ad campaign, they'd say, oh, we thought about that. That's why we've got this cute young couple... And she's smiling, by the way. She's not thinking about snowshoeing, I don't think. But they're putting the snowshoes back in the, back in the vehicle, okay? They'd say, oh, no. We market tested this. We focus grouped this. We workshopped this. And we found that people like this couple, the snowshoe couple. They look at them and say, I want to be part of that couple. They, 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 that's, I would say, okay, great. But do you really want to send an email that says, don't let this interfere with your adventures and budget this winter, this winter, on a vehicle that's six months old and is still well within every single warranty the vehicle's got. Do you want to send that? Why not? And again, I'm not an advertising person. I'm not a marketing person. I'm just a lawyer. <laughs> a magician. Captain. Why not send the email instead that says, this is just, I'm just thinking off the top of my head right now. You know how secure you are with your vehicle right now, how you know it's going to get you from point A to point B, and you know that warranty is there for you. You know that great feeling you have. Why not extend that feeling beyond three years and 36,000 miles? Why not extend it to 550? Why not? You could do that now. Capitalize on the positive of it. Instead of trying to scare somebody and say, by the way, your vehicle could suffer a failure that will interfere with your adventures and budget this winter. No, it won't. <laughs> Maybe the people at Ford Protect headquarters, Ford Protect at e.fordprotectplans.com. Maybe those people should get together and talk to people over at Ford.com about the warranty. And then maybe they'd realize, oh, maybe it's stupid to be trying to sell a warranty to people who are within the original warranty by scaring them about things that will happen outside of the warranty and implying they could happen inside the warranty, which they can't. I don't think. Now I'm wondering. <laughs> I'm worried. This couple looks so happy. They've got snowshoes and an extended service contract. <laughs> By the way, snowshoeing is the worst of all worlds, okay? <laughs> You're on snow, but you can't slide your feet. So I don't ski, but I don't snowshoe either. <laughs> so that's my advice to the people at Ford right now. You build decent vehicles. I've always supported Ford. I've owned a bunch of Fords. Don't try selling me a service contract while I've still got a warranty by worrying me <laughs> that I might have a catastrophic failure that's not covered under warranty when it ought to be covered under warranty. So that's my thoughts for today on the winter. Keep that new vehicle confidence alive wherever you venture. Ugh. Questions, comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Now, let's proceed in an orderly fashion.